Hey guys, what's up? My name is Tom Spark and welcome back to a new video. Today I want to talk a little bit about VPN audits and what they mean. Should you be using a VPN that has an audit? Um, should you not be using a VPN that doesn't have an audit? Today we're going to answer those questions with some of my opinions and then we're going to see what we think. Hey guys, if you haven't checked out my website, I really encourage you to do so. It's called vpntierless.com and essentially what it is is a collection and kind of organization of all the content on my channel. You could view the tier list, which ranks all the VPNs pretty much in existence. You could click on the VPNs themselves to visit the VPN, click on the numbers to visit the review. Um, you can even click on this to see a collection of all the individual ratings for every category of every VPN in a handy dandy comparison table, kind of like a spreadsheet. We also have this, which will list out the best streaming VPNs. This, which lists out some of my favorite products and online services. If you go back to the home page, you could click here to go to the VPN Noob to VPN Master Course, which pretty much teaches you everything you need to know from the basics on VPN. I also have a fact page here to list out some of the common questions um, asked on the channel, as well as some other tier lists I've done as well. Anyways, guys, back to the video. All right, guys, so what is a VPN audit? A VPN audit is when some kind of external company will look at a VPN's um, application um, to make sure that it's not doing anything it's not supposed to. Normally what was happen is that a VPN will hire some company and then they will have like a set application version and then they will check that application and then the audit company will be like, everything looks to be good. There's no leaks, there's no logs. It is the product that you are advertising. Now, this sounds pretty good on paper. You know, a company providing more transparency is always a good thing. However, audits have a lot of problems. One problem is the company that the VPN is hiring to do the audit. Um, if a VPN company can specifically choose um, a company to audit their stuff, I don't really think it's all that much merit. Now, I don't want to give you an impression that I'm alone in this idea, that I'm the only person out there that doesn't think that VPN audits are genuine and, you know, really that great. Because there are certainly people out there who don't think VPN audits really mean that much. And there are questions that come up when a VPN company hires a company to audit them. I was talking to a former VPN employee at a company, one of the biggest VPNs there are. I'm not going to say who this guy is just for in terms of anonymity. Oh, but this guy was mirroring a lot of my own thoughts. He was saying here in my conversation with him is that, you know, most VPN audits really aren't worth that much. Most of them are just kind of what he referred to as security theater. He said here that you can easily clean up code, servers, and then change them afterwards to whatever you want. The irony of this is that the companies performing the audits themselves are paid by the people needing the audit, thus a conflict of interest. Not only that, but there have been audits performed in the VPN industry that the companies actually told the auditors what questions to ask and the scope of what they could audit. So the fact that the VPN companies are paying the companies to audit them already kind of makes the entire thing useless. The audit's not going to say anything the VPN company doesn't want them to say. Not only that, but if the auditors have a specific list of questions to answer or scope around, then it's just a PR stunt, plain and simple. So a lot of times what companies will do is when they kind of lose some reputation or they're under crossfire or something, they're like, hey, we're going to get an audit. We're going to prove to you that we're a good company. Now, it's kind of funny because most of the companies that have gotten audits are actually companies that have kind of come under bad PR for one reason or another. Um, there's a company called Viper VPN, which got an uh, audit, and it was kind of like one of the first VPN companies that started getting audits. Audit And Viper VPN kind of had like a pass, so people weren't sure if they did collect logs or not. So they kind of had to get an audit to kind of set that straight and get better PR for their company. Now, Viper VPN admittedly is one of the better companies, I think, that has gotten an audit. It's pretty good for streaming. It's pretty high rated on my tier list. Another thing to consider is that when VPN companies choose companies to give themselves audit, a lot of times there's actually kind of like a difference in what the audit's looking for. Take, for example, NordVPN specifically got a VPN to prove that they don't collect logs. This was after they had a big PR disasters like um, that they got hacked and they weren't securing the servers properly, even though they kind of blamed it on the server provider, not themselves. Even though other VPNs that were using the same server providers and had the same vulnerabilities didn't leak the same amount of information. So, but that's kind of neither here nor there. It's a different story for another day, but they chose to get an audit to show that they didn't collect logs and other companies have gotten um, audits to prove that their applications are secure. But in a lot of ways, these audits, they're kind of made to be like positive public reception for these companies. 
but it's kind of funny because in most every single case of the audits themselves um they kind of in my opinion kind of backfired take for example molvad got audited and there were several issues that were discovered one issue was rated critical and one uh, rate, rated high i guess the end results were rated positive um because they i guess fixed them and stuff like that Oh, but even in this example, only the front end service of the, the was analyzed by the audit. Not only that, but, you know, other VPNs as well. Like when I was talking about TunnelBear, uh, the company that audited them founded two critical, five high, three medium and seven low issues with the service. So it's like, what's going on with these audits? Should you even be getting an audit? It's just going to show that you have all these problems. Not only that, but audits for stuff like ExpressVPN uncovered eight security issues although none were rated higher than a medium level. Um, so, and all the problems I guess have been fixed. So they received like a positive review, I guess. But my main problem with this is that audits are a single point in time kind of thing. ExpressVPN take its application or Movad's front end analysis or something like that. It was at a specific time. Um, are these companies getting audits every year? Are they getting audits three or four times a year? Chances are not likely. Each application version is not getting audited and make sure that they are secure and everything like that. There could be bugs and stuff we don't know about because there's not audits going on all the time. Most of the time, I think these audits are just made for kind of PR moves like, hey, let's we can now officially say that we've been audited and people are going to be satisfied with that. But at the same time, it's not like every subsequent um, release and update is going to be secure. Audits don't keep happening. And that's why I think it's kind of like a public perception kind of thing. I mean, don't take word, my word for it. I was seeing people on the WeVPN Discord talk about it. One of the people who worked there was saying that he kind of wanted to make some kind of email to the VPN companies like this. Um, you know, you got audited in 2019 and your reviews and all your and you yourself talk about like it's some kind of game changer. However, that was a specific version of the application. Now they're on a more advanced version of the application in the future. And what happened to the builds in between? Did they get audited? Was there something that was leaked? Uh, there's a vulnerabilities that weren't disclosed. Um, so uh, this this guy thinks it's kind of like a marketing employee as well. Is the audit in the past really that useful if it's not like a current audit? So there are a lot of problems to think about as I discussed in this video. Audits often discover stuff that you don't really want to be there. They could be specific audits not covering every part of the company. The problem with what audit is on a specific version. Uh, version, not virgin. Not only that, but the company gets to pick a specific company to audit them. You know, can you trust that specific company um, that is auditing the VPN? Um, a lot of people don't really know that much about these companies either. So there is kind of a lot of gray area here. At the end of the day, do I really value um, a VPN audits that much? Well, most of my top rated VPNs actually don't have audits. Because in a lot of ways, they're not completely necessary. Um, what happens with audits? Well, th things like security issues, security bugs are analyzed and disclosed and fixed. But if a company doesn't really have that many security issues, they've been around for a long time, they've fixed things, they have stuff like bug bounty programs where they could get people to um, pretty much test and find bugs for them and then could pay them to do that. Well, then they're not going to have that many bugs or security problems that would be defined by an audit. Not only that, but a lot of the bigger companies are spending money on audits. Audits are very expensive, and companies have to smartly decide where they want to spend their money. Stuff like TorGuard and AirVPN are smaller companies that are kind of tightly run. AirVPN itself is open source, so people can observe the application itself. The client is open source. So that's a good transparent way to make sure that there's nothing going on behind the scenes that you wouldn't want. Not only that, but companies like TorGuard are very transparent with any security vulnerabilities they've had. They also have a very good bug bounty program, and they've never had any leaks. In fact, you know, some of these companies have had less leaks and stuff than the companies that do have audits. So that doesn't necessarily mean a company that has an audit is going to be more trustworthy than a company that does not have one. Anyways, guys, that's just my thoughts. Let me know down in the comments down below what you think of VPN audits. Do you think they're useful? Do you think they're a waste of money? You think the VPN should be better off spending money elsewhere? I'm curious to know what you think about it, and I'll see you again very soon.